Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, today is Friday and we're fast approaching the end of the month of April. Praise God. Now, God has been so good this month, bringing us to a place of uh, understanding his personality. And because there are certain things that God have um, decided to do in our day and in this season that if you don't align yourself with his purpose you will not understand first of all and two you will miss out on what God is doing now you see whatever God is doing in the open it has to take root in our individual lives if it's not taking root in our individual lives, whatever that thing is, it's easily uprooted because there is no root. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the wisdom of God's word. And yesterday I was talking to you about um, Jesus speaking and saying, if you don't come to me, you will not have life. And there was a reason I was sharing that with you. And that's to tell you that every word that comes out of his mouth, carries wisdom in it every word everything jesus said everything god said now we read from genesis god speaking you know that's why i always say the, the the bible has one message from genesis to revelation it has just one message and what's the message god speaks to people that's the only to me that's the only message so you have all these testimonies saying this same thing and if you don't think it wise to see how you can connect with this god that is speaking and let him begin to speak to you then your whole reading of the bible have been a waste i'm telling you the truth it's a waste if you don't bear the same testimony that everybody that we read about in the Bible bore, you have just wasted your time reading the scriptures. If all you do, you go to church, and you know, sometimes ah, I'm committed in my church. Okay, are you committed to God? Yes, of course I'm committed to God because I'm committed in my church. No, sir. You can be committed in your church and God does not know you. He can use you mightily in your church, yet he doesn't know you. Ah, but that's partial and that's not right now. Uh-uh. You were. <laughs> you see, um, there are certain things we say and, and sometimes people go, but that's not fair. When you understand God, you would understand that it's not about fairness, it's about truth. It's about truth. I made a statement yesterday. I said there are people who will, they will never get saved. There's nothing you can do about it. They can never get saved. Now, those are the people that are actually, the, those are the people that the lake of fire was prepared for. If you read the book of Revelation, he spoke about it. So he says, those people whose names were not found written in the book of life, they were cast into the lake of fire. So people think that he, he was, he, he's, he's talking about people who did not get born again, people who rejected salvation, people who sinned, and people who, and so we have this mentality that um, their names were not there, uh, or their names were not there because it was wiped off. I've heard all those teachings, you know, everybody's name is in the book of life, but when you die without giving your life to Christ, your name is erased from the book of life. And then we, we have heard teachings about when you get saved, your name is transferred from, there's another book, the you know, book of death and transferred into the book of life. No, sir. No. The book of life, when you now understand that the book of life was written before the foundation of the world. so before you were even conceived by your parents your name have been registered in the book <laughs> yes it has been registered in the book then also the book of revelation i think chapter 13 verse 8 and chapter 17 verse 8 
spoke about people whose names were never written in the book of life. See? So we have people whose names were written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Now that's to tell us when the book of life was written. The book of life was written from before the foundation of the world. Okay. And there are people whose names were never written in that book. So it means from the foundation of the world also, they were not written. So the next question you now want to ask yourself is, how did they find themselves here? See, and that's another question. We'll answer that another day. That's not our focus today. So I was, I was letting you know that the end, the first thing God is going to do, because people don't even know this. People say, oh, it is those who didn't give their lives to Christ that will be cast into the lake of fire. No, sir. There are people who's, who, who, who didn't give their life to Christ that will not go to the lake of fire. They are dead now, but they won't go to the lake of fire. No, they won't. As long as your name, see, because there are people whose names are in the book of life. They, they died without hearing the gospel. See? No, those ones will be judged according to their works. And then what will happen afterwards? They'll be thrown into the lake of fire uh, if they didn't do good works. See, you don't even understand what he meant by they'll be judged according to their works. So when, he's, when you read according to their works, you think he is talking about the good things you did. No. There is something you need to understand about God and man. The fact that somebody is not born again doesn't mean he doesn't have a connection with God. Everybody whose name is written in the book of life have a connection with God. That's the whole essence of having your name in the book of life before you were born. So the moment you are born, an angel is assigned to you. What's the job of that angel? He has a script of your life. Now, whether you're born again or you're not born again, this follows. You see, so his job is to guide you according to God's purpose in life. So when the Bible says you shall be judged according to your works, this is what the Bible means. What the Bible means is you are going to be judged according to the things prescribed for you to do and how you did them. It's not going to say you, how many times did you come to church? Okay, church was open in your lifetime. Church was open 1,000 1, times and you attended only 200 times. Ah, no, 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 no. You don't qualify. Stand this way. No, sir. No, sir. Did you do the things the Lord impressed in your heart to do? Because God will not judge you for things that he did not give you to do. He won't. He won't. Secondly, God will not judge you for things he has not brought knowledge for you to do. See, so angels will be judged. Men will be judged. Why will angels be judged? Because some of them failed in their responsibilities. Then men will be judged because you failed in your response. You knew the good thing to do. You knew the right thing to do because it was impressed in your heart. And you, now I said whether you're born again or you're not born again. So there are, there are people who die. Read the book of Revelation. What did it tell us? He said, hell will give up all the dead that are in it. What do you think that means? They all come back to the earth. Everybody who have died in hell, died and gone to hell. Yes, hell. It's not everybody in hell that will go to the lake of fire. I tell you this boldly. It will help you. Go and study again. I've read it before. Go and read it again. With this new information I'm giving to you, please take the patience. Go and read the book of Revelation again. Just read the last three chapters again. So, not everybody, everybody in lake of in, in hell, there's no lake of fire. There's nobody in lake of fire present. And, and you know, I think I was talking about this on, on Tuesday or Wednesday. I was talking about this, that you know, people believe that God doesn't, uh, what's it called? God doesn't kill. It's not God that sent down fire when Elijah. They don't know God. <laughs> they, they, they don't know God. See, the Bible speaks about the lake of fire. Do you know where that fire is going to come from? You know, do you know, 
<laughs> I got that, yeah. Can I tell you something? The lake of fire that you imagine, that you think about, you just say, oh, what place burning with furnace. What you don't realize is everybody that is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. You remember John said something. We're talking about the wisdom of God's word. Now I told you, we'll be, we, we, we enter into different things. So, so I pray you catch wisdom here. So John was preaching and he said, I indeed baptize you with water, but there is one who's coming after me who's mightier than I. And John made this statement. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Okay. Now, people look at that scripture and say, oh, you need fire baptism. No, sir. Let me, let me tell you this truth. Please, and please, and please. You don't need fire baptism. Don't ever confess that. It's not for your good. What do you mean? We, we need to be baptized with fire. That's why you have a lot of weak Christians. Ah, understand first, please, before you use your mouth to destroy your life. I'm telling you the truth. John was speaking to the Pharisees, as in Matthew chapter 3. John was speaking to the Pharisees and he was not edifying them. He was rebuking them. Go read it. He said, you brood of vipers, meaning you children of snakes, who have warned you to flee from the rocks to come. Now, he was baptizing people, okay? So he lifted up his head and he saw the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Now, as a preacher, you're supposed to be excited when you see the people that are supposed to be in the opposition come to not just listen to you, come to submit to you. You should be excited. Like, wow, the Lord is doing great miracles here. But not John. He was just a different breed, praise God. John looked at them and said, you, you children of snakes, I come in a farati agabaya. He said, who has warned you to flee? Understand the, the, the tone of that message. Go read it again. I'm not going to read it for you. Go read it if you're serious. So John looked at these folks and said, so the, that message was preaching to these Pharisees and Sadducees, not to everybody. So John said, you brood of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come? So John was testifying that there is a wrath to come. Okay. And it was meant for a specific kind of people. So John was looking at these folks and said, who warned you? Who, who came to advise you that you should flee from that wrath that is coming? Then he said, bring fruit that is worthy of repentance. Let's see. And he, he actually said to them, don't think in your hearts to say that you have Abraham as your father because God is able of these stones to raise children for Abraham. John literally was telling these folks, instead of God accepting you, he will raise new sons through stones. How do you say that to people who come for your meeting? Not just come for your meeting, came to submit to your baptism. Then John continued further and says, and now the axe is laid to, its root, to the roots. Every tree that does not bear fruit will be cast into the furnace. Then he now made a statement. I indeed baptize with water unto repentance. But there is the one who is coming after me. That one, when he comes, he will baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hold on and follow carefully. He went on to say, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather the wheat to the garner. But the shaft, the same one who's coming, will gather the wheat to the garner. The shaft, he will burn with unquenchable fire. Unquenchable fire. For who? The shaft. Merge that with the parable, the, the parable Jesus gave about the man who planted a, a, a good seed in the ground. Then at night, an enemy went to plant tares. And so the man says, um, 
the, the servant said, what do we do? Should we go? I said, no, leave them. Let's try, in trying to remove the tiles, you will destroy the, the, good, the good tree, the good plant. He said, leave them till the time of the harvest. And Jesus now said, in that time, the Father is going to send his angels to gather everything. And they are going to separate the wheat from the shaft. So what happens to the wheat? The wheat, the wheat is, is kept in the Ghana. The shaft is born in uh, unquenchable fire. And that's the story about Holy Ghost baptism and fire baptism. If you understand, and I pray the Lord gives you understanding. Holy Ghost baptism is for the wheat. Fire baptism is for the shaft. Now here's where I'm going with this. The one who baptizes them is the same. Jesus is his name. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now that's why all the, in all the days of Jesus, he never opened his mouth to speak of fire baptism. He never did. Why didn't he? Because the time was not yet. And you remember when he started his ministry in his hometown, he was given the scriptures to read and then he was reading from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me. And then he got to a place and said, and to preach the, the acceptable year of the Lord. He stopped there and closed the book. Now, that same verse, if you study from Isaiah 61, Jesus did not finish reading that verse. He stopped right after saying, preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The next thing was supposed to be, and the year of his, I mean, this, the, the day of his vengeance. But Jesus knew he cannot confess that because he would not fulfill that at that time. Now, this is the same reason he never mentioned fire baptism, but he spoke about Holy Ghost baptism to his disciples. Are you getting this now? So, when you go, oh, you will be baptized with fire. Ah, please say no. Say no. Now, here's the point. For those who think God does not bring fire. <laughs> Is it a baptism of fire? Do you know it's going to be by the manifestation of the Holy Ghost? That lake of fire that is going to burn forever is the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. So these people that are going to be thrown into this fire, they are thrown in the Holy Ghost. And they will burn forever and ever as the work of God. For who? For the devil, I told you, the devil cannot be killed because he has eternal life. See? So, the devil and all his angels, spirits don't die. You can't kill a spirit. A spirit is eternal. So, they, they will now born in that place. If it was possible to destroy them, it would have just been good to destroy them once and for all. But it's not possible to kill a spirit. So, they will now born forever in that place. That's the final judgment and then those whose names were not found written in the book of life they were not found because they were not written in the first place okay they were never written in the first place like i said another day we'll talk about where they came from and how come uh, they, they they are here but now i said something god is a god of righteousness all these things are to exercise loving kindness judgment and righteousness righteousness meaning if god had planned the earth now listen to me some people don't like this message but i'm sorry to tell you it's the truth if god had planned that the earth will be the the people on the earth it's supposed to be one billion people for example and you have 7 billion people and, or more on the face of the earth right now. It, 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 some say, why can't God do something about them? No, that would not be righteousness. See, people think righteousness is, mm, just leave it, just leave it. No, righteousness simply means sticking to the plan. That's what righteousness means. Sticking to the plan. See, if you're married, for example, 
And doing righteousness in your marriage is simply sticking to the plan. Now, whatever challenge you're going to face in life, you're doing righteousness. Anything you do, whatever you think it is that made you to abandon that marriage, no matter how right you think you were, you did not do righteousness. Yeah, tell you the truth. You did not do righteousness. Because righteousness simply means sticking to the plan. Now, I, I can tell you this for free. There are some marriages that were never meant to be in the first place. Ah, no, no. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth. There are marriages that were never meant to be in the first place. So when we, when we enter into areas like this, they become tough. But then also, you don't just wake up to correct things by yourself. You have to be guided by the Spirit of God to bring forth that correction. If you do it by yourself, you'll get into the judgment of God. Also, that's how it is. See, ah, yeah, the Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. Praise God. What a way to end today. But hear me. Righteousness is simply sticking to the plan. If God had a plan from the beginning, that's exactly the plan that you will find in the end. Nothing will be added to it. Nothing will be subtracted from it. If God had planned for one billion people to be on the earth, at the end of the day, it's that one billion people he has planned for that will be on the earth. Nothing will be added nothing will be subtracted from it you can write this down because you'll find out that is the truth may god have mercy on you may god open your understanding today may god give you the wisdom of his word in your heart in the name of the lord jesus christ god bless you i'll see you on monday have the best weekend ever bye